Hi everybody, welcome. Uh, best of luck if you've got your exam coming up soon. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at the reading today, uh, looking at some general strategies, um, but then we're also going to look specifically at those two um, areas which tend to cause the most problems, which is the um, true, false, not given, and the matching headings. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's have a look at some of these uh, skills and strategies that you need to use. Um, so obviously you don't have time, you cannot read all of these passages very carefully. You've got 20 minutes, you know, per, and actually probably a bit less for the first one. So you really need to employ some good strategies to, to speed up and to get to that information as quickly as possible and not waste time looking at it. Okay, so hi Pachu. Um, so let's think about some of these different skills. Um, so can anybody tell me um, what the skills are that we tend to use in the reading? Okay, very good, everybody's there. Skinny, uh, yeah. Skimming, scanning, there's a bit, not scamming, <laughs> that's something different, <laughs> that's cheating. So yeah, skimming and scanning, and we also have, yes, very good, actually reading in detail. Okay, so you're going to use a mixture of those throughout the, the different types of exercise. Different exercises require different uh, strategies and different combinations, okay? And I can see we've got some yeah, highlighting keywords is also going to be something very important that we're going to do. Okay, so let's have a look at how we use the, these skills in general. Okay, so skimming we tend to use at the beginning just to give you an overall idea. Um, because um, then you know you you know more or less what is going to happen in the uh, in that passage. Okay, so what do we skim read? Okay, um, we need to have a look. You know, just a couple of minutes at the passage, uh, and that's just going to give us a very general idea. But it's also going to help us to to plan out that passage so we know where we're looking later on. Okay, uh, so first thing you need to do is read the title, read any subheadings there are. Also, if there's quite often there's a diagram or a picture, um, and that's going to give you quite a lot of information as well. Okay, um, so if we have a look at our example here, this is one that we're going to use for the true, false, not given. Um, so that tells you the topic and it also tells you what you're likely to see. Um, so in this case, what, what is the subject of our reading passage today? Okay, good, very, very good, Pachu, that's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> Did it yesterday, so you're gonna be very on top of the ball, Samira. Um, what, what are we looking at in this passage? Okay, okay, very nice. So an ancient Chinese dynasty and a particular aspect of that dynasty. Okay, uh, this is the reading is the same for general training and academic IELTS. It's exactly it's well, it's not exactly the same, but it's these types of exercises are exactly the same. Okay, so yeah, ancient Chinese dynasties, particularly the chariots. Okay. Uh, so it's a historical type of passage. Yeah. Okay. Then what you want to do is just have a very quick look at the question. Okay. So get an idea of what kind of questions am I going to be looking at in this passage? What kind of techniques am I going to need to use? So for example, here we're looking at the true, false, not given. So those strategies are what you're going to need to look at. Okay. And as somebody said earlier on, you know, get that key information underlined so you have a really good idea of what you're going to come across. So keywords tend to be anything like a name or a date, a time period, um, very good to underline because 
easy to find in the passage. Numbers are easy to find in the passage. Anything with a capital letter is easy to find in the passage. And they don't tend to be rewritten using synonyms or paraphrases, okay? You're gonna see that information exactly the same way as it is in the questions, okay? Um, and sort of technical words, if I can put it that way, uh, also because again, they don't tend to be changed into synonyms um, and they will help you find the right place in the passage, okay? Um, so that would be the unusual uh, nouns. Oh, is anyone having a pro Jamie, are you having a problem hearing me? I've got a few comments. No, you're muted. <laughs> okay, but you're okay. Good. Yeah, All right. I can hear you okay, Annalie. Think... Okay, there was just a couple ones came up, so I just wanted to check everybody was, was okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if not. <laughs> so. Okay, good. Um, okay, so we've got our key words. We know exactly what we're looking at. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at these questions. So if you look at number one, what would you say are the key words in the first one? Which expressions? Yeah, okay, exactly. Grave goods and, and written records. So these are specific. They're going to help you distinguish this section from any other sections and probably, you know, they're going to be using the same words. So they'll be, um, they'll be easy to find. Okay. So there we go. Uh, second one. Okay, very good. Yeah, exactly. An Yang, because that's a name. So that's going to be easy to find. And yes, I think you're right there. Uh, also human skeletons. Unlikely that skeleton is going to be written in a different way. You know, it's very specific. Okay. Um, possibly killed in war. I think that, that could also be one, but these, these are going to help you find it in there. Okay. Um, oops, I've gone ahead. So number three. Okay, you're there as well. Yeah, terracotta army. You've got a specific name, so don't need to think about that. That's definitely going to come up exactly as is. Okay. And number four. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Tian Kamen and Kit, the Qin Emperor. Okay, so mainly we're looking at names here and also some unusual nouns, some technical words. Okay, so those are, at the moment you're just getting a general idea, you're looking for the easiest words to find um, rather than the words that are going to tell you the answer, which is going to be the next stage. Okay. Um, so you've had a quick look at the passage, you've had a quick look at the questions, okay? Um, the topic sentence is a very, very helpful um, area for you to look at because it really helps you work out in more detail what kind of areas are going to come up. Um, and um, it also gives you some idea of the organization of the passage, okay? So what is the... Uh, the topic sentence, what does it mean? Which sentence is the topic? Okay, very good, uh, Saragan. Um, so it's the first sentence in each paragraph, okay? So the last also, Sky, is very useful as well. I mean, the beginning and the end are the areas that tend to give you the most important information. Um, but if you want to be very quick, then you put it in, you only look at the first sentence because that will give you the topic of that paragraph. That's why it's called the, the topic sentence. Okay. So um, we'll do a little bit of uh, practice with that. Okay. Um, again, you know, highlight the key words if you're able to. It will help you later on to get back to the, to the right area. Okay. Um, so. Any key words, if you remember the sentences that we just looked at, can you, any key words you can see here, which also appeared in the questions that we looked at, okay? Yeah, so an yang, um, very easy to find. So that's definitely something that, that came up in a couple of places. Uh, the grave goods, yeah, you've already found the grave goods, you found the tombs, 
Okay, so it helps us start to get an idea of where those questions are going to be found in the overall passage, okay, and the kind of thing that you're looking at. Okay, so there's our topic sentence, okay, and then underneath that we've got an yang, and then we've got our second topic sentence. So it doesn't take very long to just skim read, not read carefully, but just skim read through those first sentences to get a good idea of the passage, okay? So, and then we get an yang again, and then as you said, we've got grave goods at the bottom there. So we're already getting a good idea of the location, okay? And another thing that you can do, and this is actually gonna be particularly important for the matching headings, um, but just, Try and put things in your own words, okay? This is actually a really, really important skill that don't, people don't do enough, I think, uh, in terms of preparation and during the exam, is actually just you know, breaking yourself away from the words that are in the passage or in the question and changing it into your own words because it really opens up your brain to see the connections and to understand things much better. So I think it's a very good practice technique before you take the exam and it's something you're going to use in the exam. So just, just get into the habit of not just taking things as they are, but, but continually, if you can put it in your own words, if you can just change it a little bit, I think you do that as a native speaker. So it's a good thing to do as a, you know, as a student of the language, okay? Um, so looking at the, I don't know what's going on with the audio, Jamie, I'm sorry. Um, if you're looking at the first paragraph, what, what is gonna be talking about in the first paragraph? Okay, good, so we've got the Yin Dynasty and, Okay, and we've got an yang. So we're talking about the dynasties there. So this is kind of like an introductory, yeah, about the ruling classes. And what about the second one? What are we looking at in the second one? Okay, good. And then we go down to a more a specific tomb that they're talking about, which is this Fu Hao tomb. Okay, so everything in that paragraph is going to be related to that particular tomb. Okay. All right, good stuff. Okay, um, and then if we look at the next paragraph, um, so again, uh, any words you can see there which we saw in the, uh, yeah, okay, very good. So the terracotta army, so we can immediately know that this is the right area for us to find the answer to that true, false, not given question. Okay, um, and then we also have some of the other ones, yeah, okay, very good. So the Chin Emperors, Tutankhamun, that was the last one. So we're gonna get two of our answers from this specific um, passage here, okay? All right, and again, you know, put it in your own words, break away from the words they've given you, okay? If you're dependent on the words they've given you, it's gonna be harder to make those connections between the questions and the passages. Okay, um, so mainly in C, we're going to be talking about, about what? Okay, yeah, exactly. The terracotta army and then going into that too. Okay, um, so doesn't take a very long time. It only takes a couple of minutes but it really helps to give you a, a, an idea of what the overall passage is about and what you're going to find in each of those paragraphs. And then that speeds up your ability to get quickly to the right piece of information as you go through those passages. Okay, and remember you're gonna be redoing the same part of the passage for different um, exercises that you do. Okay, so that's just a summary there of the different areas that you can skim read in order to get an idea before you start going uh, um, through to that. Um, I would do yeah one sentence at a time for it's gonna depend on the exercise, Samira, but in the true false not given, you want to really go one sentence at a time and then you know you move on to the next one. If in doubt, 
you know, between two answers, put those two answers down, then go back and, um, and check that at the end, okay? So let's have a better look at this one. So this is what the question always looks like, okay? And there's also the yes, no, not given questions, okay? So what's the difference in terms of the type of passage? between true, false, not given, and yes, no, not given. In terms of the, the style of the, yeah, okay, very good, yeah. So true, false, not given, it's a factual um, passage, and then the yes, no, not given is the opinion of the writer. So you've got to remember, is it agreeing or disagreeing with the opinion of the writer, not necessarily what anybody else thinks that is mentioned in that passage, okay? All right, very good. And, you know, do also be careful when you're writing them, because this is, I think some people don't get this right. Um, then uh, if you're gonna write, if the exercise is true, false, not given, then, write true false not given or tfng but if it's yes no not given write y -N -N -M -N -G. trust me a lot of people have made that mistake in the past they think it's the same thing they write yes instead of true and it's wrong even if it you know they, they got the right answer okay so do be careful about that it seems obvious but it's happened a lot before Okay, so now we're going to look more specifically at this. So we've already highlighted our keywords. So we know what we need to be looking for. And as I said before, you know, think about it in a different way. What other ways could you um, use? Could you say those words? Um, so for example, if we look at number one, probably, you know, the keywords are going to be the same, but we've got proved to be accurate. So can you think of any other ways of saying that something proved to be accurate? Anyone find a way of paraphrasing that? Okay, verified. Okay, yeah, something like evidence. Okay, yes, was correct. Okay, yes, yeah, seemed correct. Seemed right. Okay, good. So yeah, again, you're already thinking about different ways of saying that, okay? Um, what about in number two? What about identified? Could there be another way of saying identified? Okay. More or less, yeah, maybe recognized as... Remember that identified is when they, they yeah, they know exactly noted. Um, that's quite good, yeah, I like that one. Um, okay, what about people who lived nearby? What's another way of saying that? Okay, okay, we've got local people there living around, maybe neighbors, local residents. Okay, very good. And how about by chance? What's another way of saying by chance? Okay, good, accidentally, by luck. Okay, very nice, yeah. Uh, and finally, in the last one, we've got bigger than, so words related to size that we could use? Okay, good, yeah, larger, greater, something like that. Okay, so, you know, start thinking about those other words because that's gonna, you know, be necessary to, in order to get the right information. Okay, so here's our first one, okay. Um, we already found grave goods, so we already know where we are. So one question, by one question, okay? Um, and we found the key words. Um, so we've got grave goods. Is there something about written records near to the grave goods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so we've got, yeah, we've got oracle texts, very good. Yeah, so we've got something written, okay? Oh, and we've also got records, so we've got the same thing there. So we know we're in the right area there. Okay, so remember you've got to find where the specific area is. You don't want to look for words that are going to just come up repeatedly through the passage. That's not going to help you at all. You've got to make sure that you're in the uh, right area. Okay, 
Then we read around very carefully, and we're already ahead there, okay, to find out. So, yes, okay, very good. So this answer is true, and the key word, as quite a few of you have already said, is confirmed. So proved to be accurate, confirmed. I think a few people put confirmed before when we were doing the, um, uh, the synonyms, yeah? So you already got it there. Okay, so proved to be accurate, confirmed. So what you're looking for, you know, there's no analysis here. Generally, people tend to go the wrong way when they analyze, but you're looking for the same information expressed in a different way. Okay, it's quite simply that. So if it's expressed, you know, different words, but it's the same meaning, it's true. The, diff the words are opposite to each other or contradictory, it's false. If it's a different kind of information, then it's not given, okay? So if not given means that you cannot say for sure if it is true or false. Could be either way, we just don't know, okay? So let's have a look at the next one. So always with true, false, not given, yes, no, not given, you're moving down in the same order as the passage, okay? So you don't need to go back and forth. You can start from where the last one was, which again is why we go one by one, okay? So we know that we've already done confirmed by the Oracle texts. So we move on down from that. Um, so can we find our other key word there at the bottom? Okay, very good, sweater skeletons of human slaves. Yeah, we've also got things like resting place. So we know we're in the right area now. So look at the other key words. We've got soldiers killed in the war. What have we got down in the text? Okay, we've got slaves. And how were the slaves killed? This guy's got it human sacrifice okay so is this the same information or is it contradictory information okay very good it's contradictory information slaves are not soldiers killed in the war is not a human sacrifice okay so those are definitely conflicting pieces of uh, of information Okay, so we can say very definitely that it's false. Okay, so soldiers, slaves, killed in the war, human sacrifice. So again, you know, you're just finding the same kind of information. Who were the people? How were they killed? Is it synonyms or is it contradictory? If it's contradictory, it has to be false. Okay. All right, very good. So let's keep moving on. So again, we know we're moving down to the next one. Okay. So again, we're going to just keep moving down to, to C. And we've got the key word. So can you find some synonyms for discovered by people uh, who live nearby? There's a typo there. Okay, very good. So local farmers. So live nearby, local accidentally by chance a lot of people before you put accidentally you put um local okay so we know we're in this area okay so is it true false or not given okay very good guys true yeah it's basically exactly the same information we've just expressed it in different ways Okay, all right, good stuff. And then the next one was Tutankhamun and the Chin Emperor, okay? So again, we just need to move down to the next one. We know we're down here, we've got Chin, we've got Tutankhamun, and then we need to check the meaning, okay? All right, so, in the question, we're talking specifically about size, yeah? And what are we, ta are we talking about size in the paragraph? What are we talking about in the paragraph? Yeah, okay, exactly. We're talking numbers in the paragraph. They're not equivalent, okay? So we can't say, it doesn't say that it's bigger, but it doesn't also say that it's smaller. 
we don't have the contradictory information, so we can say that it's not given, okay? So it's different information. It's not true, it's not false, it's not given, okay? So with the not given, you know, what you need to do is just ask yourself, could it be true? And if the answer is, I don't know, then that's when you put not given. It might be bigger, it might not. Yeah, I simply don't know, okay? So remember that it's different information. The question is talking about the size. So there would have to be, for it to be true, there would have to be a synonym for bigger in the text. It would have to say of a greater extent or a greater surface area, something like that. Mm -hmm. To be false, it would have to have contradictory information. So it would have to say that it was smaller than. Okay, you would have to have some kind of expression that meant smaller than. Smaller than cannot be bigger than. They're definitely opposites. So that's going to be false. Okay, for not given, you cannot say whether it's true or false. Okay, you just don't know because they are talking about different things. Okay, in the question, they're talking about size. In the text, they're talking about the numbers of soldiers, the numbers of chariots. That doesn't tell you how big it is. Okay, does it? We can't say, you know, there were six, 8,000 soldiers, it must be bigger or it must be smaller. How could you possibly tell? You can't tell. So then, you know, we have to say that it's not given. So I think the best thing to do with not given, if you think it might be not given, is ask yourself, could it be true? And if the answer is, it could be true, I don't know, then not given. Okay. If I don't know about the two numbers. It would have to be, it's unlikely that they're going to compare two numbers because that's really more of a mathematical question than, a, than an English question. They are going to have an expression of size, which is going to be bigger or smaller, okay? There is no word there in the text, in that paragraph, which is a synonym or a paraphrase for bigger, okay? There's no synonym for bigger in the, in the text. There's no synonym for smaller in the text. So we have neither a confirmation nor a contradiction. We have something different. And when we have something different, then we have to say not given, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're looking for true, false, not given is facts. Yes, no, not given is opinion. Okay, you're absolutely right, Pachu. There's no comparison. There are no comparative expressions in the passage. So we cannot say, okay? We can only say that this one is bigger and then this one has different types of things in it. It's just not the same information. Okay. Right. Okay, good. I think we're getting there with that one. Okay. So just to summarize that, underline the keywords in the question, find where they are in the passage and remember to find more than one so you know you're in exactly the right place. Read that very, very carefully. Okay. And always move down and ask yourself, okay, is it the same information? Is it just the same information using synonyms? That's true. Is it contradictory information? That's false. If you can't say because it's different information, then it's not given, okay? Um, and this number six is very important because there are words in the true, false, not given that normally you would consider to be not important, but actually they're very important. So things like all or most or the majority or some or few, um, always, never, sometimes, those kind of words are often the key to the answer, yeah? All is not the same as most, yeah? The majority is not the same as some. So those are the kind of expressions 
that they're going to give you the right answer. Okay, and then just make sure you use the right um, abbreviation for the exact one. Okay, all right, good. So let's have a look at matching headings. So if we have a look here, this is our example. Okay, so we've got here eight headings and we have six paragraphs. <laughs> this is my enemy. <laughs> it's everybody's enemy, Harrietta. You're not alone, trust me. Um, so there's more headings than paragraphs, okay? Very important, you are not going to use all of those headings, okay? And it is a nightmare, I do totally appreciate that, okay? Um, in terms of your answer, these are not the answers, by the way, but this is just an example. Um, you just need to put the numeral, the, the Roman numeral. Don't waste time writing out this, the heading in full. No, you don't need to do that. Okay. So, um, again, same kind of skimming that we talked about with the true false not giving. Have a look at the title. Have a look at the topic sentences so you get an idea of the organization. If there's a picture or a diagram, have a look at that as well. Um, so this is about the British bittern. Does anybody know what a bittern is? <laughs> no. Oh, very good. It's a kind of bird and you will see a picture of it later on. So very good. Um, a specific vocabulary there. Um, but there would be, in this case, a picture of the bird, so you wouldn't need to sort of to work out what that is. Okay. So let's have a look at the strategy for this. So first thing to do, quick read through the headings. Uh, again, that will give you more information about the topics here. And you know, you'll just have have an idea in your head of the different different types of headings that they have there, okay? Um, then you go through paragraphs one by one. So you're just gonna read paragraph A, first of all, very quickly, skim reading, okay? And very, very important, summarize it in your own words, okay? Don't be trapped by the words in the passage. They are not gonna help you. You've got to put them together into an idea, okay? <laughs> you're ahead of me just hang on <laughs> um but this is really really important don't be dependent on the words that are there um but yes you're absolutely right so i'm just gonna have to go ahead with this one um so very good so why is it two what is the information that's telling you that it's two <laughs> thank you <laughs> people can't wait <laughs> Okay, so we've got, yeah, fewer than 20, what else? Okay, good, yeah, it's all about numbers, okay? So we have there, yeah, we have rose to a peak, we have falling to, so these are synonyms or paraphrases, other ways of saying fluctuation. We also specifically have the word numbers, we have example of numbers, so clearly, that is the fluctuation there. There's nothing else there that talks about any kind of change in the numbers, okay? Um, but they do try and trick you with calculating the numbers, but it's not about the change in numbers, okay? Um, okay, there's nothing about, remember you've got to find the same words, okay? So there aren't any words there related to beginning, which there would need to be for it to be uh, five. There would need to be something about calculation, which there isn't, but there is definitely a change in the numbers, okay? So if you think about overall, what's it talking about? It's talking about the change, okay? So we've already done that one. So how about B? What are we looking at for B, okay? It, okay, very good. So why are you saying number five? What, what are the words, the synonyms in passage B that are the same? Okay, good. Yeah, we've got count. Mm -hmm. We've got monitor. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, we've also got our first 
So first beginning, okay, we've got monitor, calculate, we've got count, calculate, numbers comes up the same, okay. Um, and again, methods is part of calculations, okay. Yeah, so B is number five. So again, it's just, you know, you're looking across, can you match those synonyms across between them, okay. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we've got here C, which is talking about their understanding coming from their research. Then we look down at some recommendations. So <laughs> it feels like hell. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry. Okay, what about C? What do you think for C? Uh huh. Oh, we got some. Bit of confusion going on there. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to tell you it's one. Okay, <laughs> a couple of people have put one up. Okay, why is it one? What are the synonyms? Okay, so we got research. Yeah, okay, very good. So based on this work, so based on the research. Okay, and then, okay, good. Yeah, so we've got the understanding, we've got the recommendations, which is the same as the decisions. Um, and we've got the example of the habitat, which is the rebed. And we've also got habitat itself in the first part. Okay. Um, so we've got some words that are the same, and we've also got the, um, the synonyms there. So if you're basing it on the work, that's the findings, go forward to make decisions or recommendations. Okay, that's quite a tricky one, I don't think. Yeah. Decision recommendations. Okay, so the decisions made or the recommendations are made. Okay. All right, and again, things like project, funding, work, understanding, these are all words related to research and findings. Okay. Um, okay, so I've gone through that. What about uh, D? I'm just going to move the chat, guys. Sorry, because I can't actually see it myself. Okay, very good. So why are you putting number seven? What are the words that are telling you that it's number seven? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, so look how many times read bed comes up there. Yeah, four times all the way through the passage. So it's not, it's clearly, it's not just one detail in the passage. It's something that is being talked about all the way through. Okay, and again, we talk about the recommendations going forward from the research. Okay. Um, the read bed, again, at the picture at the end, I will show you the read bed, but at the moment just to, it's the habitat where this bird lives, okay? So it's an area um, of, of plants where the bittern tends to live, okay? But you will see it at the end, all right? Okay, so again, you know, think about the, the frequency with which these words come up, um, because again, this is an overall idea. It's not a piece of information within the passage. Um, so if you see something coming up frequently, then um, you will, um, you know, you'll see that that's something that's overall. Um, it's, it's probably not important, sorry. It's one of those where you could use either way. You know, it's quite common in English, but it's the same word. Yeah, exactly, Patu. Lots of rebeds, so you can see the repetition, you can see the frequency. That's telling you a lot. Okay. Uh, so going down, oh, I'm just going to make it on quarter two. So E, what do you think for E? Okay, I, do, I wanna, yeah, the Huen said a synonym. Remember, it's not always exactly a synonym. Sometimes it's a paraphrase. So this is why I'm saying don't get caught up with one word and expect there to just be an exact synonym. Often it's a paraphrase, okay? But it, the information or the idea, the expression is still the same, okay? All right, very good, very, very good. So again, 
what's that okay their survival mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah we've got lots of information about we've got diet we've got starvation um we've got prey we've got fed we've got fish um okay so a lot of words related to food there um and you know how important it is yeah they did not survive starvation was the likely reason so that's the importance okay so again that's where it's more like a paraphrase than exactly a synonym okay um okay alkaline's asking a question wait wait a minute i want to just uh, um are you th still talking about e alkaline just i want to make sure i'm not yes okay so before we go into f guys why is it not three why is the answer to paragraph e not the third option okay yeah it's not it does yes exactly so it's not talking about protection okay or preservation um that's not the main idea it's really focused on what's causing the problem for the chicks it's the food so that's the most important thing in terms of their survival okay yeah so the focus is on diet and therefore food just because they talk about young that's not enough they mention that but that's not the overall idea is not the protection okay so um i think we were there with it yes so number three now we're moving on to the bitten so again if you're not sure you know put a couple of answers down or just put them in the margin and then when you move on often you'll find that no this is a better answer okay so yes i mean lots of mentions of young bittens and protecting okay provide suitable sites sustainable population secure less less vulnerable that's all about preservation okay so you can see that f is much closer to the third heading than e is if you compare the two okay all right well done and there you have a lovely little family of bitterns and their baby bitterns i don't know if there's a name for a baby bittern and that's a reed bed okay yeah oh very much so <laughs> so bitterns and reed beds for you there okay so just to review that, okay, again, remember one by one, read the first paragraph, summarize it in your own words, and then try and find the one which is closest. Remember, it's the overall idea, it's not the specific information within it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Excellent. Thank you so much, Emily, for that presentation. That was great. Uh, we got through a lot of material there, so well done. And um, thank you guys for your suggestions and for, for taking part. I hope you found that useful. Um, so we had a lot of your questions coming in to the Q&A. Um, I have been trying to answer as many as I can through the presentation we've got quite a few more um mm -hmm. if you we so we have some time now to discuss any other general questions uh, you have about reading or any other aspect of the ielts test um before we so if you if you'd like to add in your questions to the q a we'll discuss them in a moment and um, before we do that i'd just like to mention our writing and speaking evaluation service this is something we offer on our website, ieltsonlinetest.com. If you're interested in improving your writing, you can send in uh, an example of your writing to our website. One of our examiners will look through it, uh, make any corrections, give you a band score uh, based on your performance, and give you very detailed feedback about what you can do to improve your score. Uh, we offer a similar service for speaking as well, where you can book time with a speaking examiner and uh, we'll give you uh, verbal feedback on your uh, performance going through a full speaking test. We'll also um, give you a full written report as well afterwards. So if you're interested in that, that is available on our website. I will put the link uh, in the chat just now. 
So, yeah, I've just put the link in. All the details uh, are on there, so please check that out. Uh, so, uh, we, we also have a video course. I've put the link to that for reading and listening as well on how to focus on different question types and strategies you can use. So, if you'd like to review uh, the material we've covered today, if you'd like to look at different strategies for other types of questions, uh, you can find that all on our website as well. Okay. Um, Annalie, shall we take a look at some of these uh, questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had uh, quite a few questions, first of all, on the computer-based test. And I've answered quite a few of them already. But one of the questions was about, can we highlight the words um, in the computer-based reading test? Is it, does it have that function? And I don't know if you know the answer to this, Annalie, but I did go and check already. <laughs> so um, you, you can, uh, in the computer mm -hmm. delivered IELTS, you can right click on the screen mm -hmm. and you select highlight and that will let you highlight the text in the reading passage and the questions. So it, you do have that option as well. Okay. Um, there were also a lot of questions as well about true, false, not given. And how do we identify when a question is not given? Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the main one that students are, are asking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think usually it's between false and not given um, because true, I think it tends to be easier because it is just a direct um, you know, paraphrase of the two things. If you're not sure between false and not given, then ask yourself, could it be true? Okay, could it be true? If the answer is no, it couldn't be true, then you put false. Okay, the opposite, the information, it's, it's opposite, it's contradictory, um, it's, you know, against each other. They can't possibly both be true. Yeah, okay. Um, but if it could be true, then it's not given because you don't know. So I think if you've um, decided it's not definitely not true, but you're not sure between false not given, that's the question to ask yourself is, could it be true? If the answer is no, it's false. If the answer is yes, then it's not given because you just no. don't know. The information is just not there, okay? And be very careful about analyzing because that's when people tend to go wrong. You know, if you're saying things like, well, you know, if, if they've got 8,000 soldiers, well, then it's, you know, it's probably bigger because 8,000 soldiers, that's quite a lot of soldiers. That, that's just analyzing. That's just coming up with ideas. That's not, you know, based on the language which is in the text. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd agree with that. I think um, one area that's useful to focus on as well is things like the negatives and the modifiers. So if it says, you know, most, um, you know, of the soldiers did this, but in the passage, it says all, then you know that that's false, because only most, most is not the same as all, it's false. Whereas if it says, yeah, like if there's just not enough information mm -hmm. for you to know, um, if it just says soldiers did something, then you, you don't know. Is it most? Is it all? We don't have enough information. It's mm -hmm. not given. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. Uh, another question about the exam. Can we write in a notepad uh, given uh, during the exam? This is a question from Sanket. Um, okay, if it's the written paper, you can write any notes you have on the question paper. Uh, you won't be given any extra paper. Um, but um, I believe when it's the computer-based one, you can have a couple of sheets of paper to just sort of um, make some notes um, yeah. and kind of help yourself think. But if it's the written one, just use the question paper because nobody sees the question paper, it gets shredded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've been told that in the computer delivered one, you'll get some uh, two sheets of paper with your login details on them. So you can use them to make notes and it won't affect anything uh, to do with your score. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yep, and I can see Trang in the uh, chat there said they've taken the computer-based test and there's one paper for mm -hmm. you. That's, mm -hmm. that's good to know, Trang, yeah. thank you. Uh, but you can't take your own piece of paper in, okay? Yeah. You definitely wouldn't be able to take your own notebook or anything like that. It would be given to you. Definitely, definitely. And um, I can see a comment there in the chat from Michaela about the academic word list. I think that's a really good suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of students have been asking, you know, how can I develop my vocabulary? How can I learn to read more quickly? Should I try and learn every new word that I encounter? Um, but Michaela, uh, has mentioned there the, the academic word list. Mm. Just for students that maybe don't know, Annalie, could you say a, a bit about that? What, what is it? Uh, yeah, so there is a, it's a list of the most common words that come up in academic English. And um, there's various versions of it. The, the full academic list is incredibly long and it goes through all of the different word forms of each word. Um, but you can also get sort of slightly shrunken versions on various websites and, and ESL websites. Um, and I think they're more helpful and they're very helpful for the writing as well. You know, you have these words like, you know, benefit and impact and influence. Um, and then, you know, that's very good for you to use in your writing. And it's the kind of language that will come up also in the um in the reading passage so rather than the absolutely original one which is really big i would try and find one of these slightly more condensed ones or divided up ones that you can get on quite a few uh websites and you know it's a good resource i wouldn't learn them systematically i'm not sure how helpful that would be but it's a good resource um to check and i think you know reading generally around academic um, websites, things like National Ge Geographic, that kind of thing is really going to, you know, help you with your reading. Yeah, definitely. Um, just so a question there, can we watch this lesson for review? Uh, yes, that will be up on our YouTube channel uh, from tomorrow. I've put the link to that in the chat. Uh, was that Sar Saradin? Uh, Saradin? It will be on our YouTube channel from uh, tomorrow there. Okay. Uh, let's see a question here uh, from, um, sorry, my, my screen's freezing because we have so many people in the, in the chat, but let's see, uh, from Sandra, Sandra is asking, um, I want to know if all the questions concern all the passages at the same time, or are there specific passages with their own questions? Uh, it does depend on the exercise. Most of the exercises will cover the whole passage. Um, there are sometimes you get things like a flow chart or a diagram right, that you have to label. And quite often that can be just relating to one section, but they won't tell you which section, um, which is why, again, it's quite good to skim through the topic sentences because then you would know, okay, this is where they describe the process of how this works. And then that's something you can use to label the, the diagram. Um, but Jen, most of them will, will cover the whole passage. Yeah, uh, and just to say there's usually, well, there are always three passages in the academic reading mm -hmm. and there'll be a set of questions for each one of those passages. So questions one to 15, passage one, 16 mm -hmm. to 30, passage two, like, like this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it is divided by passage, but yeah, as you, as Annalise said, it's uh, not within those questions, it's often uh, mm -hmm. the whole passage. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, a couple of questions about filling in answers. Um, is there an answer sheet where we fill in our answers or should we write our answers on the question paper? Um, there's for an answer sheet for the listening and for the reading. Um, you must fill in your answers in the answer sheet. It's the only thing that the examiner sees. They will not see the question paper. Um, that is shredded immediately after the exam and so are all of the you know, bits of note paper. Um, so make sure that you use the answer sheet. For the listening, you have time at the end to mm -hmm to transfer your answers to the sheet, but for the reading, you have to do it as you are going through the paper. There's no transfer time. 
Yeah, exactly. And this would just apply for the paper-based IELTS for the computer. It's mm -hmm. all done on the computer, so you don't need to worry about copying your answers across. Yeah. Um, in some ways, it would make it a bit more simple. Um, a similar answer for the writing as well. Someone's mm -hmm. asked, do we uh, have time to copy across our writing? Uh, Adelie, <laughs> <laughs> shaking your no, head there. No, like, please don't do that. No, that's yeah. a really, you will never have time to write a, a rough copy and a good copy. Uh, just write it. Examiners are very used to things being crossed out and, you know, and arrows going here and there. Um, but I have in the past seen people who've tried to do that and I've ended up, you know, with one paragraph, which is all I can mark. So yeah. um, it's a real, not a good idea at all. Yeah, yeah. Another possible reason to try the computer delivered test, um, you just type on the computer. If you're confident typing, um, that could be really helpful for you. Um, you don't need to worry about your handwriting. But again, that will be different for, for different people. Mm -hmm. So excellent. Um, guys, I'm afraid that we have come up to the end of the lesson today. So we're going to have to uh, say goodbye for now. Um, but just want to say a very big thank you to Annalie for presenting today, for covering <laughs> a lot of complex material. So <laughs> thanks very much, Annalie. Um, thanks, Jamie. Thanks to you too. And thanks, everybody. Did really well. Yeah, yeah, and thank you guys for, for joining us. It's been it's been great to see you all. Um, we have a number of other webinars coming up in the next couple of weeks. You can find the details for them on our website, IELTSOnlineTest.com. I've put the link uh, to that in the chat. Um, I've also put the link to our YouTube channel where you can watch the recording for this webinar and our Facebook page as well. If you could give us a like, a share, or a subscribe, uh, that would be great. It helps us to keep us uh, helps us to keep offering these webinars for free. So, um, hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been great to see you, and uh, hope to see you again for another session soon. Thank you very much. Bye, bye guys. Now. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye. Guys, bye, Annalie. <laughs> bye bye, Jamie. Cheers. I know.